Alrighty, welcome to chapter 6, section 1 called Angles of Triangles. This is for Integrated Math 2 or IM2. Uh, so just go over a couple things on this, the main screen here. The first thing you'll see is a due date. I just don't see that on the teacher preview, but you'll see it on your student side. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the second thing you'll see here is the attempts. You always have unlimited attempts, meaning you can come in and complete this assignment as many times as you would like until you have the grade that you're happy with there. Um, and that's true for homework assignments, quizzes, and tests. Uh, number of questions, that just tells you how many questions are on this particular assignment. So this one has eight. Uh, grading policy is best score, so whichever attempt is the best one is the one you keep. And partial credit's enabled, so if you answer one of eight questions correctly, you get credit for one question, or however many you answered correctly. Um, please remember that once you start your homework, you must finish it before you can work on anything else. And what that means is once I click Start, down in the bottom right corner of your screen, you will see a submit assignment button. I know it's not here on my side because it doesn't show me that on the teacher preview, but on the student screen, it is there down in the bottom right corner. So two things happen when you click that button. Number one, like it said, it, it allows you to work on other things. It's going to lock you out if you don't click that button, if you just close the screen, because um, it assumes that you want to leave this attempt open. Um, remember, you have unlimited attempts, so you do not need to leave the attempt open. It also saves your place. So whatever you've answered correctly already, as long as you have a green check mark up here on your questions, it will save your place, and you just pick up where you left off when you come back in on your next attempt. You do not start over. Uh, the second thing it does is it affects the grade book. So your teacher can actually see what you've been working on. Um, until you click that Submit Assignment button, it's basically just paused. We don't get to see anything. Um, so just always click that button. On the, the right hand side of the screen here you can see these three buttons. We have expl explanation which tells you you're going to lose your current question attempt because it's literally going to give you the answer or the solution to this question. So it's not going to give you the answer and then let you come type it in. It's going to make you come in on another question attempt to try that or another you know assignment attempt. Um, example will quite literally show you an example of what it is it's asking you to do. So on this one we're looking at the angle um, triangle angle sum theorem, which says that the angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. Um, and you can click this again for another example if you would like. Um, you can also message your teacher directly from the screen, so it'll attach a picture and we know where to come help you. Alright, so the triangle angle sum theorem, um, like I was just saying, all triangles, no matter what triangles I draw, so I can draw any triangles I want here, um, and I can draw a nice big wide one. Doesn't matter how I draw a triangle, the angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So that's what the triangle angle sum theorem says. Okay, so this is a little animation. I was going to try to do it on my other screen, but it's not working nicely. So we have a triangle here, and they're showing us the three angles of a triangle. So we can see red, um, blue, and green. And then they're giving us this straight line, which is a linear angle. And a linear angle adds up to 180 degrees. We've dealt with that quite a few times. So this little animation is just showing us that if we take those three angles that we just had within here, they completely fill up this 180 degrees. So it's just kind of a way, a visual way that we can see. They add up to 180 degrees, and you can do this with any triangle. So anytime you draw a triangle, as long as they're nice straight lines like this, you could actually cut away the angles and form a linear angle with them or a straight line. So it's just one of those little pieces that you can definitely um, test out if you wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this guy. Um, and I'm going to refresh the screen because for some reason it wouldn't let me do this on my own screen. I don't know why it stopped letting me cut away the angles. Being argumentative with my program there. Um, oh, let me turn off the lasso tool. That would probably help. Okay, so now that we know that they add up to 180 degrees and we've kind of seen the little proof on that or the, the reason, um, is we're just going to go ahead and apply that. If if x plus 38 plus 92 equals 180 degrees, we're just going to say x plus 38 plus 92 equals 180 degrees. So we're going to add these two together. So we get 8 plus 2 is 10. 9 plus 3 is 12 plus one more is 13. So we get x plus 130 equals 180. And now to solve for x, I just need to move this 130 away, so I'm just going to subtract 130 away. Um, and in this way, too, what we're doing is we're taking the 180 that we know this is our limit. This is what they have to add up to. And I'm subtracting away what I'm already using. I'm already using 130 degrees of that. 
So what's left over? That's basically the question we're asking here. What's left over of the 180 degrees that I know they have to add up to? Um, so in this case, it would be 50 degrees. That's all that's left over for that x, for that angle there. So I'm going to go ahead and click check. And ta-da. All right. So next one. Um, now we're going to take a look at um, acute, obtuse, and right triangles. So this is kind of the same idea as when we're doing acute, obtuse, and right angles. So we need to remember what those mean. Um, and what I've been having students do in class with this one is literally draw, and I'll do this with the line tool so it's nice and straight here. So I've been having students draw a right angle like this. Um, so here we have our right angle. This is 90 degrees. So this is where we're starting with is a 90 degree angle. And I'll put 90 degrees out here for this one so it's not in my way. So a right angle is defined as a 90 degree angle um, or it's perpendicular. The sides are perpendicular to each other. Um, so this is kind of our starting point because the other two definitions kind of come right off of this one. As long as we know what a right angle is, then we can define an acute angle. Um, so an acute angle is anything smaller than 90 degrees. So I'm just going to go with blue here like this. And so this is an acute angle. Um, so it's less than 90 degrees. So it's anything less than 90 degrees. So I can even draw the other side of this, which, which would be the red side here like this. So it's kind of taking that up. So it's this angle in here, this blue one. So an acute angle is anything less than 90 degrees. Um, and then we can go with a, an obtuse angle. So an obtuse angle is anything greater than 80 degrees, or sorry, 90 degrees, but it has to be less than 180. So it can't be, can't go farther than, you know, a, a straight line. So we, we have a limit here as far as we can go. But with this one, it would also have an edge over here, like this. So we're kind of using that edge over and over again, like this. And now I can go from here to here. So it's bigger, it's more than the 90 degrees. So it's, it has the 90 in it and then goes a little farther here, right? So this, this is kind of an extra area. So obtuse is greater than 90 degrees. Um, it's also less than 180, like I said. So if we were to continue this line over um, for the, the angles here, so if I was to continue this over, it can't go past this line. Um, so if we were to draw a line going like this and we try to go all the way around like that, well, that's, that's not obtuse. That's going past the 180. So it does have a limit. We can't go that far. Um, so anywhere you know, bigger than 90 or greater than 90 and less than 180 because we don't want to go past that linear mark there. Um, so these are the basic categories. Um, and when we're looking at these, um, when you have an acute angle, and I did acute in blue here, or an acute triangle, so an acute triangle, um, all three angles are acute, are acute. So all three angles have to be less than 90 degrees in order for us to call that an acute angle. So if we come over here and we look at this, the only one, because I have 60, 30, 90, well, that's not less than 90. I have 120 here, that's not less than 90. 60, 60, and 60, this does work. So this guy would be acute. This is, it has a 90 again, so that would not work. Um, if I go with obtuse, which I did in pink here, so obtuse triangle has one obtuse angle and two acute angles. Acute angles, I'll just finish that off there. So one obtuse angle and two acute angles. And this works directly off the triangle sum theorem because if we think again of a triangle, if we have to add up to 180 degrees and I have something that's bigger than 90, so this, this angle, whatever it is, is greater than 90 because it's obtuse, and they all have to add up to 180 degrees, I can't then have another angle that's also obtuse. I can only have one because 90 plus 90 is 180. So if I had two angles that were more than 90, so two obtuse angles, that wouldn't work. I have more than 180 already just with two angles. And remember, 
all three angles always add up to 180 degrees. So this just works directly off the triangle angle sum theorem. If I have one angle that's larger than 90, the other two must be less than 90. They must be acute angles. Um, and we'll go over there and categorize those two in just a second. And then we have right triangle. So this is the same idea as obtuse, except instead of one obtuse angle, it's one right angle. And two acute angles. So this is the idea here. Um, and again, this works directly off the triangle angle sum theorem. If I have one 90 degree angle like this, I, these other two have to be smaller in order for them to all add up to 180 degrees because I can't have two right angles. If I had two right angles like this, well, that's not going to make a triangle because now I'm already using 180 degrees. So my other angle would be zero and that's, you know, that doesn't work. That doesn't make a triangle um, in order to add up to 180. So we can only have one. All right, so over here, I can already see I have a right angle here, so that's a right triangle. I have a right angle here, so again, right triangle. And then this guy here in the middle, this is an obtuse because 120 is more than 90, so obtuse triangle. So it's just about categorizing. We just need to go over those definitions, make sure we know what those three things mean before we move forward. Um, all right, so now we're going to look at the exterior angle theorem, and I do think we prove this in a little bit. Um, and I'm going to be a little bit lazy with this one. Instead of drawing it, I'm going to steal a picture of it. There it is. Drop it in there like that. So I don't have to redraw it again. I mean, this one's pretty darn easy to draw, but I'm just being lazy with it. All right. So with this one, the exterior angle um, theorem states that this angle here adds up to the two remote or opposite angles in, in interior angle. Sorry, I forgot the word interior. Um, and again, this works off of linear angles and the triangle angle sum theorem. So that's where this comes from. And I do believe on one of these questions, we prove this. Um, so again, these guys have to add up to 180 degrees, all three of these angles here. And then if I switch over and I look at this linear angle here, they have to add up to 180 degrees because a linear angle or a straight line is 180 degrees. So if I notice this blue section here and this red section here are the same angle. So if I'm adding the same thing to 133 to get 180, or I'm adding the same thing to these two angles to get 180, then they must be equal to each other. Um, these must add up to the same as 133 if I'm adding the same thing to them. So it's kind of one of those a um, little bit of logic, like following that around a little bit. Um, so we can use this triangle um, or exterior angle theorem to just say 31 plus x has to equal the 133. Because no matter what, I'm, I would add the same thing to this, whatever this one is here, which I could pretty easily find if I wanted to, um, using that 180 degrees idea, um, I'd have to add the exact same thing to 133 or 31 plus x to get the 180. So we're kind of just ignoring it a little bit there. Um, and so now we're just going to subtract 31 because I want to know what x needs to be. So 31 minus 31 cancels and we get 1, 0, Two. So 102 degrees um, for X here. Um, and then if you, you know, of course there's more than one way to do this in geometry. Once we get to these, these triangles and these different theorems or the proofs, there's always more than one way to look at it. So I could very well go through and I could have found what this question mark is here. What is this angle? And then once I know what this one is, I could use the triangle angle sum theorem to fill in what this one was. So this just saves us a step. It's one equation as opposed to two. But um, either way, you would have arrived at the exact same amount, which is 102. 102 degrees. All right. So now I believe we're going to use um, both the triangle angle sum theorem and the exterior angle theorem, I think. 
Um, there's a couple of different ones. So let me take a copy of this one again real quick because again, that's just super easy. Oops, that was a skippy little copy there. So let's go with a nice one. Um, where is it? There it is. Just a second. All right. So, and I absolutely love this drawing program. So, um, this this one, um, I believe, is just called Sketchpad. Um, so it's a super awesome program that lets you do all kinds of stuff like this. Um, it's meant for drawing, but hey, it works really, really well for math too. If you like this drawing program, um, I also have a pen tool, which is. Um, I'm not using a mouse when I do these things, so just in case you were wondering. Um, all right, so we're going to use um, some of these pieces that we already know about to figure out what is X, because it's asking us to find X. So I want this amount here. I'm told that this angle right here equals 31, and that this angle out here equals 28. This exterior angle is um, 102. So if I'm looking at these pieces, I know I have a triangle. So I know there's extended lines. Um, and I believe that's even what this one is called, a triangle with extended lines, um, or finding a value with extended lines of a triangle, something like that. Um, I wish this program would actually give you the name of it when you're looking at it, but it, it doesn't. I know I have it on the notes pages um, when you look at them there, though. Um, so here we have this triangle, which I just highlighted in yellow for us so that we can see that a little bit easier. Um, and we're going to go through and apply some of these pieces that we already know about. So one thing, and we haven't reviewed this today yet, but we always can use what's called vertical angles. So anytime you have a, two lines crossing like this that make an X, I can go across the vertex or opposite like this, and these two angles are congruent. So I can go you know, this way, I could also go across the vertex. This way, um, as long as I'm going across and they're kind of opposites like that, they are called vertical angles. So that's one way, if I'm thinking of this triangle, and I just learned two theorems about the triangle, the triangle angle sum theorem and the exterior angle theorem. So I'm probably going to use the triangle in some way. Um, it's just one of those pieces that, you know, kind of making those connections. Um, so I want to bring this 28 inside here. Um, so if I go across the vertex there, where they crisscross, then these two are called vertical angles. Vertical angles. And I make you guys do this in class if you have me as a teacher in class. Um, I make you write out the reasons. What are we doing here? Because when we get to theorems, um, or proofs, sorry, um, that's a very important step. Not just, I know I can bring the 28 in, why can I bring this 28 in? Why does this equal 28 degrees? It's because it's vertical angles. So give a statement. Here's my statement. This angle here equals 28 degrees because here's my reason. Vertical angles are congruent. So are congruent like this. So I know vertical angles are congruent. Um, the more you practice this, the easier these things are going to get. Um, the more you write it down, I think the easier they get to remember as well. All right, so we have this 28 degrees on this side. Now we have this angle up here. So if I wanted to know the entire angle, um, and I'll do this kind of in a light blue, I guess. So this entire angle here would be both angles added together. So X plus 31 equals whatever this angle is. And I know they're not labeled as far as, you know, I can't say angle ABC or, you know, however we would label these. But I know that this is going to equal X plus 31. And this is angle, angle, addition. So I can add two small angles together to get the larger angle here. So that's called angle addition. Um, so now there's a couple of things I could keep doing. Um, I could use the exterior angle theorem right now, um, or I could continue bringing angles inside to use the triangle angle sum theorem. Either way would be correct. Um, it just depends on, you know, if you see the exterior angle theorem. So with this one, I can see this 102, sorry, I almost said 120. 102 is an exterior angle. And I have these two remote or opposite angles. And when I say remote, 
Think of like a TV and you're using the remote. The whole purpose of the remote is that I don't have to walk over to the TV and actually touch the TV to change the channel. I can sit on the couch and change it from there. It's not touching, right? So that's the same idea here. This 102 is not touching these other two. The only angle it is touching is this one here. This would be the, the linear angle with it or linear pair. Um, but these are the two interior remote angles or opposite angles, I think is how Alex sometimes says it. Um, so I can add these two together and it's going to equal the 102. I can also do the linear pair, subtract from 180 because remember a linear pair has to add up to 180 and that would give me this angle here and then these three have to add up to 180 as well because triangle angle sum theorem. So it just depends on which method I want to go with. Since we just did the exterior angle theorem, I'm going to go ahead and go with the exterior angle theorem um, like this. So this is the exterior um, angle theorem. Theorem, sorry, I almost forgot the O, um, which just states that the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles or the remote interior angles. So let's see, I'm gonna write this out over here. We have X plus 31 plus 28. So here's my opposite interior angles and they're gonna equal 102 when I add them together. So now I have X plus eight plus one is nine, three plus two is five. So I get 102 and then I'm gonna subtract the 59 from the 102. So remember, this is the same idea when we were doing the 180 and I was saying, you know, what's left? Well, it's the same idea. If these two have to add up to 102, I'm already using 59 degrees of that. So I'm going to take that away to see, well, what's left over for this X, for this angle here. So let's see, I'm going to have to borrow and I get 10 and then I'll borrow again. So I get 12. So we get three and I get four. So I get 43, um, I believe. Yes, that looks correct. So 43 degrees for this angle X here. So again, and I know kind of going around sometimes multiple options isn't always helpful because that can be a little confusing as far as, you know, well, which option do I choose? It just depends on which option you see first. If you have kind of connected with that triangle angle sum theorem, the three angles of a triangle out of 280, and you can fill in all the tri the angles, go ahead and go with that one. If the exterior angle theorem makes sense to you and you definitely see that first, choose that one first. Um, no matter what, we do have to use the vertical angles. I have to bring this 28 in. I don't really have a choice on that one. And then I do have to use angle addition here to get this whole top angle of the triangle. Um, because right now there's no way for me to fill in these little pieces here. Well, actually that's not true. There is a way for me to fill in these pieces here as if I wanted to as well. Um, but I think that's a little extra work if we were going to try to do that. Um, so, all right, let's keep going here. So now we're going to look at some parallel lines. Um, and it's been a couple weeks, I think, because of um, Thanksgiving break since we've actually looked at these. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So here we go. Um, so parallel lines have some of their own rules when we have parallel lines and transversals. Um, so when I have two parallel lines, and it's going to use this symbol parallel instead of the word parallel, so be aware this means parallel. So L is parallel to M, and this is these are just parallel marks when you see these. Sometimes you might see them filled in like this, little triangles. Um, kind of depends on the book or, or the person that's doing the, the video. <laughs> um, I tend to just do those little open arrow type things. So this just shows that these are parallel lines. Um, and from here, what we can do is start applying some of those rules of parallel lines. So I'm going to kind of highlight so this is a transversal, and I'm, I'm drawing it a little bit through the, the triangle there just so that I can continue it. This is also another transversal on this side. So we actually have two different transversals. And we can kind of flip back and forth as we need to. Um, so with this one, 
if I'm looking at the first transversal here, which is the blue line, that's the first one I drew, um, we have parallel lines in a transversal. So I'll do it in light blue. Um, if I look at this X and I want to bring it kind of closer, I need to, to bring this in. Um, there, well, there are, again, there's more than one way to do this. These three angles would have to add up to 180 degrees. So if I can find out what this one is, I could definitely fill that in. The triangle that these create here also have to add up to 180 degrees. So if I can fill those in, I can um, potentially find out what X is as well um, because I could apply some of the parallel rules here, um, jumping it up if I know what this angle is here. Um, we also have an exterior angle out here, which would have to add up to these two pieces like this. So if I can fill in this one, I can definitely use the exterior angle theorem. So three different methods that I could use just for this one. It, it, are some of the methods a little easier than others? Yes. Um, so I always try to go through and say, okay, here are my three methods that I could do, but which one's the easiest one? Um, and it's actually the last one I mentioned, that exterior angle theorem. Um, because if I'm looking at this X and I want to um, use the exterior angle theorem, which means I need to fill this piece in here to equal the 150. Well, X is an interior angle. It's in between the parallel lines. It's on the left side of the transversal. So I can actually use what's called alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles are always congruent as long as we have parallel lines. If we don't have parallel lines, we can still call them alternate interior angles, but they're not congruent. Okay, so we do have parallel lines. So alternate interior angles means that I'm interior, so I need to be in between these lines here, but I'm going to be on opposite sides of the transversal. So I, I'm not just going to jump over to the just the opposite side, the right side, but I drop, jump to the opposite side and then slide down all the way like this. So these are called alternate interior angles like this. And I can actually, I'm going to try to do my little lasso tool. It wasn't working earlier, but let's see if I can do it now. So I'm going to grab this guy really quick and go like this. And I'm going to spin it around sh to show you. If I spin this around, I can actually drop it right on top there. And if you notice, it fits perfectly right on top of there. Those are congruent angles. Um, so it's just one of those things. Um, it just makes it very visually easy to see. I can definitely use these two. So now I can use that alternate um, or that exterior angle theorem. Let's see what color have I not used. Green. So these two angles, 101 plus X, have to equal 151 because of the exterior angle theorem. And the more we move through this, the more we're going to see these shortened versions of everything. So instead of literally writing out alternate, I wrote alt. Interior, I wrote int. Um, and Alex will start to do these things as well, where they start to shorten things and use symbols instead of the full words, because it's definitely very common. Um, so we have x plus 101 equals 151. So to solve for this, I just simply have to go 101, or subtract 101 from both sides. So 101 minus 101 cancels, x equals 0, 5, and then 0 again, so 50 degrees. So x has to be 50 degrees in order to make this true. All right. So again, we had to apply some of those parallel lines um, rules. And as soon as I have parallel lines in my diagram, I know I'm going to have to go back to those parallel line rules. So make sure you know, you're paying attention. What are they giving me? Why are they giving me parallel lines? They're going to expect you to use those. Um, and then they, they just gave us you know, two different theorems for triangles, so they're also going to expect you to use one or both of those. All right, so now we get a little bit more of an algebraic looking piece here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that and put it over here. Mm -hmm. Over and zoom in on that guy. Okay, 
So here we have a triangle and we've been given these three angles. Um, we're not given one right out, so we don't necessarily know what any one angle equals as far as the actual degree, but we do know the algebraic expression. So h is equal to 4x, f is equal to x plus x, or sorry, x plus 6, and g is equal to 3x minus 2. So we have these algebraic expressions for each one. What we do know about any triangle is that they have to add up to 180 degrees. So the sum is 180 degrees for these three triangles, or these three angles. So if I know that, I can immediately start using the triangle angle sum theorem. So I can say triangle um, angle sum, which means they add up to 180 degrees. So it's very shorthanded. Um, so 4x plus x plus 6, so I have two angles, and then my third angle is 3x minus 2 equals 180 degrees. They have to add up to this 180. Um, and I think I've seen this same one, it might have been on the notes pages when we were doing it, that it had a 90 degree angle, which is, that's kind of another theorem that we can use. If they did give you one of these that was a right angle, right away you could fill it in with 90 degrees if it tells you that it's a right angle. Um, we don't necessarily know that right away yet. This guy kind of looks like a right angle, but don't trust the diagram. Actually work this out. Um, but I know I had one of the examples literally tell us that it was a right angle. So use those words. So if you use those words, you can fill it in with 90 degrees um, and then start working forward from there um, as far as filling this piece in. Um, so we're going to add some like terms together. So we have 4x plus x plus 3x, so that's 8x. And then I have 6 and negative 2, so that's plus 4. 6 minus 2 is 4, equals 180. And then I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides because I want to start solving for this x. So 8x equals 176, and I'm going to divide by 8, and x equals, let's see, we get 2 there because it goes into 16, and I have 1 left over, so it goes into 16 again, so that's going to be 22. Um, so we have 22. Now is this one of my answers? No. But do I need this to get my answers? Yes. I need to know what x is to fill these in. So for 4x, I'm going to go 4 times 22, and that's going to get me 88. So this guy's 88 degrees. So it looked like 90, but it was 88. And this one over here, we have 22 plus 6, so we get 28. Um, and that was f, so I'm going to go 28 degrees. And then we have 3 times 22 minus 2, so I get 66, because 3 times 22 is 66, minus, sorry, that's not times, it's minus 2, so that would be 64. Um, and if I wanted to check this really quick before clicking check, I could just make sure that these, in fact, do add back up to 180 degrees. Um, Alex is pretty nice about this. If you click check and it wasn't correct, it's going to let you try it again. It's not going to give you a brand new problem. She's going to say, oop, that wasn't quite right. Try again. Um, go back and fix that. Um, all right, so let's look on here. So I'm going to copy this diagram. We're going to go through and make, so this is, um, oops, dang it. This is what's called a paragraph proof. Um, so it's not a traditional paragraph proof um, because they're kind of separated into a little bit of statements and reasons, but it's the idea of a paragraph proof where you're kind of working through um, a proof, writing out sentences um, in somewhat of a paragraph form. Um, so we still want to kind of mark up our diagram. So if you don't necessarily have the ability to copy and paste like what I'm doing, or you don't have the ability to print them out, I would definitely just draw this. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, you're just trying to draw this diagram so that you can go through and you can mark these pieces up. So it says in the figure below, lines L and K are parallel. So L and K are parallel. I'm probably going to use something about parallel lines there because they're giving me parallel lines. Um, the other piece it's giving me is angle 4 equals 54 degrees, and angle 5 equals 49 degrees. So I'm, I'm being given these pieces. Um, and when we're doing a statements and reasons proof, you actually have to write these into your proof. So you'd have to write 
lines L and K are parallel, and the reason you wrote it down was it was given. You'd have to write and the measure of angle 4 is 54 degrees because it was given. The measure of angle 5 is 49 degrees because it was given. You'd have three lines just to start out your proof. Um, so with this one, when they're doing the paragraph proof, it's, it's stated here, um, but the first thing they, they look at actually is by the angle addition property, angle 4 plus angle 2 plus angle 5 have to add up to, and if we look at this, it's on a straight line or a linear um, angle. So they're, they're not a linear pair, but they are linear angles because they all are on a line. So they have to add up to 180 degrees. So it's having a state that these are 180 degrees. So because we know that these three add up to 180 degrees and we're given these other two, angle four and angle five, what what is angle two? They want us to fill that in. So we need to go through and say, okay, angle four plus angle two plus angle five, and I'm, I'm doing the degrees here instead of angle four and five, equal 180 degrees. So we're gonna add these together. So we get 13 and 10. So we get 103 equal, oops, plus the measure of angle two equals 180. So now I'm going to subtract 103 from both sides. 103, now 130. Lose my mind there. So the measure of angle 2 equals, let's see, we'd have to borrow here and we'd get 7, 7, and then 0. So we get 77 degrees. So I can fill this in with 77. Um, so we've started to fill part of that in there. The second thing it says, we see that angle one, four and one are, all right, well, what are angle four and one? What could those possibly be? If I have angle four and angle one, and this is going back to those parallel lines because I'm looking at, it's going from parallel to a transversal. It's going from the other parallel to the same transversal. Um, this guy is on the left, this guy is on the right, they're kind of on opposite sides of the diagram, but they're both interior, in between the parallel lines. So um, with this one I can see that they're alternate interior angles. Alternate exterior angles would mean that they are both outside the parallel lines, but they're inside the parallel lines, so they are alternate interior angles. So this is actually one of the same things we just used on that um, that last question, that, or the last two questions ago, I think it was, um, to kind of bring that X down into the triangle. Um, and whenever we have alternate interior angles, especially since, you know, L and, and K are parallel, we need parallel lines in order for this to work, they are going to be congruent. So if angle 4 equals 54, angle 1 also equals 54. So now we're going to switch over to angle 3 and 5. So we'll go with, uh, let's see, we'll go with orange, I guess, on these guys. So angle five and three. Um, and this is kind of the same reason. It's going from parallel to transversal. It's the other transversal, but it's still a transversal. And now we're going to the other parallel to the same transversal. So we're gonna use the exact same reasoning we just did with four and one. Five and three are alternate. They're on alternate sides of the line and kind of alternate sides of the diagram. Um, and they're interior angles. So alternate interior angles. And they are always congruent as long as we have parallel lines. So if angle three, or angle five is 49, angle three is also 49. Um, so now we have this statement down here. Therefore, angle one plus angle two plus angle three is what? So. When I'm looking at this, um, and I'm gonna go up here, it we started off this whole statement with the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle five equals 180. That's a plus sign, sorry. Um, so that's a little sloppy, but it's the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle five. Um, and they equaled 180. That was the very first thing we started with here. Now they're making this new statement. Well, angle four and angle one are the same thing. 
So I can interchange, I can switch these two around. They equal the same thing. Plus the measure of angle two, well, we didn't change that. There, it's still the measure of angle two here. Plus the measure of angle three. Well, remember angle three and angle five also equal the same thing. So I can substitute angle one for angle four. I can substitute angle three for angle five and they would still equal the same thing. They, it's all the same measurements. Nothing has really changed here because 54 degrees came down here and 49 degrees came down here. So if these three angles equal 180 on the straight line, they'd also equal 180 within the triangle. So this guy's 180. Um, so this relationship between angle one, two, and three is an example of the following rule. The sum of the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180. So this is another proof um, which it's not quite the same as that one I showed you at the beginning of the video where we kind of cut the angles away and made a straight line, but this is how you move it into the triangle. This is actually the proof for the triangle angle sum theorem. Um, so let's go ahead and click check, and I think we have one more to do here. Um, all right. So now I believe we are going to prove the exterior angle theorem is what we're doing here. So let me grab that picture. This one's not too terribly to draw, hard to draw if we wanted to just draw this guy, but being a little lazy, it's a little nicer to use a printed one if I can. All right, so um, we have these three pieces here, and I'm going to switch my colors up. So I'm given that angle 2 equals 34 degrees, and I'm given that angle 4 equals 33 degrees. Um, and then we have this exterior angle three, we have this other angle one here. Um, so we just proved this first statement. The sum of the interior angles of a triangle must be 180. That was quite literally the last statement we just made on that last proof. So I hope, you know, by the end of this video, we definitely understand that piece. Um, so angle one plus angle two plus angle four have to add up to 180. Those are the interior angles of a triangle there, right? We are given that angle two equals 34, so angle one plus angle four must be what? Well, what they want us to do is just think about it. If they have to add up to 180 degrees, and we're, we're just looking at what do these two add up to? We're not necessarily asking what is angle one, but what do they add up to? Well, I need to know, I'm already using 34 degrees of the 180. So we're gonna take the, the 34 degrees away, and we're going to say what's left over. So 146 degrees added together is what these guys equal. Like this. 146. And there's a reason they're kind of having us do this a little bit funny. Um, from the figure we can also see that angle 2 and angle 3 like this have to add up to what? Well we're going back to linear pairs or linear angles here they have to add up to 180 degrees as well, just like the interior angles of a triangle. So if angle two equals 34 degrees, what is angle three? Well, didn't we just do the math on that? 180 minus 34 is 146 degrees. So I don't have to redo the math on that one, it's the same thing. So then angle three and angle one and four, what's their relationship? Well, they would be equal. They're not greater than or less than each other. This angle is equal to these two angles added together. So we have 146 for both of those. So this result is an example of the exterior angle property of triangles. For any triangle, the measure of the exterior angle is not greater than, not less than. It's equal to the sum of the measure of its two remote interior angles. So we just proved the exterior angle theorem is all we did there. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and click check, and yay, we're good to go. All right, that was section one. I will see you in section two.